Come on, Amy. Time for bed. Tomorrow morning we'll, we'll be here before you know it. Oh, I know. I can hardly wait. Do you think it'll snow, Grammy? If the TV is right, it will. I'm sure glad you got here before it started. Me too. I love snow, but only when I'm cozy inside by the fire. Now crawl in, and I'll read you a story. Would you like me to read some from that book? Oh, yes. It's a new Christopher Church Mouse book Mom got me just yesterday. It's a brand new Christmas story about Christopher. Well, sounds good. Let's get started. The night before Christmas, and all through the church house, not a creature was stirring, except Christopher Church Mouse. The old church was quiet, no sound was there made. The mice had returned from their nightly church raid. love Christmas. Our people eat such yummy crumbs after the Christmas parties. They sure do. I found a whole Christmas cookie and it only had one bite taken out of it. They sure are wasteful. This gum has hardly been chewed. Look at Freddy. It looks like he's already decorated for Christmas. Oh, I feel awful. I finished up all the punch in the punch bowl. Ugh. Yuck, Freddy, you're disgusting. You had it all over you. No worse than you, Mandy. 
You've got frosting all over you. I saw you running around that cake plate. Had to get every bite, didn't ya? I don't blame her a bit. It's not often we get such treats. She's right, Ted. You're just jealous because Mandy got more than you. I saw you trying to get up on that cake plate, too. He put me on the cake plate, Christopher, my own brother. Ted, shame on you. Nutty could have really been hurt by your doing that. I'm ashamed of you guys. Ah, uh, lighten up, Chris. This is a mouse-eat-mouse mouse world. Wait till you get a load of what I found. Ooh. Where did you get that, Ted? Off the Christmas tree. <gasps> They'll never miss it. Oh, yeah? Wait till Tuffy finds out. And don't think he won't. There's nothing that cat doesn't know. I can't believe you guys. You're all starting to act like, well, like people. We're all starting to act like greedy grabbers. What the g- g- greedy grabber, Christopher? Listen and I'll tell you. People say, Gimme, 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 until they get their way. Gimme this and gimme that, a catcher's bit, a baseball bat. Gimme, 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 gimme. Don't forget what Christmas church mouse taught you. And nonsense. You don't see people giving us mice anything, do you? No way. The only way we mice can survive is to get all we can, when and where we can. And that's just what I aim to do. I don't know, Ted. Chris may be right. I'm not sure we should just take stuff that isn't ours. I mean, Chris and I got into big trouble when we were caught stealing from the church kitchen. Yeah. Remember that trap that was set up by the janitor? A lot of us could have lost our lives in that deal. And I tell you, it's not right. And more than that, it's not healthy. Well, I'll tell you what I think. I think you're all a bunch of Freddy Cat sissies. Teddy, it sure 
It sure would be bad if one of us got caught on Christmas. I don't think any of us makes you take anything except leftovers. I think you're right, Mandy. Our people leave a lot of good stuff lying around they don't mind us having. Besides, I heard the preacher say the other day that the Bible says people aren't supposed to steal. Yes, and if people aren't supposed to, I don't think we should either. Well, I think we're missing a beautiful opportunity. You're right, guys. If the Bible says people aren't supposed to steal, I guess we shouldn't either. Well, I'm off to find some of the good stuff they left lying around for us to take. Let's go. Mama and Papa were snug in their beds while dreams of Mice Krispies now danced in their heads. Little baby church mouse, like a bug in a rug, was curled up in her nutshell, cozy and snug. Tuffy was sleeping in his usual place, curled up by the furnace in a cozy warm space. And across the hall, in her little home handy, was Christopher's own special friend, Mandy. Tucked way out of sight in a house full of junk, dozed Peter the pack rat in his messy bunk. Grandpa and Grandma were snoring and sleeping. The clock on their wall, a long vigil, was keeping.
Across from Mouse Manor slept Snooty and Rudy in canopy beds of luxurious beauty. And Christopher's cousins, said Ted and Ned, were all soundly sleeping, warm and well fed. Just down the hall in the quiet church house was sleeping the family of Freddie Field Mouse, while under the floor in their own cozy hole were napping friends, Menace and Murky the Mole. In all of the church, only Chris was awake, and although excited, no sound did he make. With an eye on the clock, he awaited his cue, for he still had something important to do. A few weeks ago, he had heard preachers say that soon they would celebrate Jesus' birthday. Christmas, he'd said, was when God sent his son so people could know of this wonderful one. He'd further explained that Christmas meant love, for Jesus had come from heaven above. That Jesus had come was clearly the reason so much attention was given this season. Birthday guest, birthday guest, Jesus is our birthday guest. Roll the drum, start the fun, you all come. Fun. Why didn't you join our song, Amy? Oh, I was having too much fun watching. I just love birthdays, and a Christmas birthday is twice the fun. It surely is. Why did you know when Jesus was born, God sent a whole choir of angels to sing at his first birthday party? And that's why we decorate with angels for Christmas, isn't it, Grammy? That's right. There's so much about Christmas I haven't thought of before. I mean, 
like it being the birthday of Jesus. I know, honey. Sometimes we just get all tangled up in the tinsel of Christmas and forget about the important part about the real reason we celebrate. You know, we give gifts to each other, but it really is his birthday, and sometimes we never give anything to him. Hmm, that's right. I really should give him something, shouldn't I? You know, Grammy, there was a part of the birthday song I didn't understand. Oh, what was that? The part about having two birthdays. I'm pretty sure I only have one. I mean, I like them so much, I'm sure I would know if I had more than one. Oh yes, Amy, you know if you had two. You see, the second birthday is received when you realize that Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins, and you ask him to come into your life. He makes your life so brand new, it's like being born all over again. That's why we say we have two birthdays. Do, do you have two, Grammy? I surely do, and it's so special because it means I'm God's own child and that I have a home in heaven. I sure would like to have another one. Keep reading the story, Grammy. Maybe that will tell me how. As Christmas drew closer, the people grew busy. Just watching them work had made Christopher dizzy. One day Chris had watched from his own special perch and had seen the people as they trimmed the church. They had set up a scene of a manger with hay, with people and animals, all made of clay. That day Chris noticed just one thing was lacking. There was no church mass that they were unpacking. He had promptly decided right then and there. They needed a mouse. It would only be fair. Program, you'll see that the next thing on the uh, program is an offertory. And if there's an offertory, that means there is a, an offering. And uh, a few weeks ago, I sent out a letter uh, from uh, our church and from our academy to our church and uh, to, to our school families. And every year at this time of the year, we uh, take up a special uh, love gift for our school staff. And uh, such a blessing to have these wonderful teachers and, and uh, administrator and staff here with us at the, at the school. And uh, I enjoy working along with them a a every day. And uh, the last couple of days, I've been helping my wife out in her class. Uh, she's studying uh, with the seventh and eighth graders. She's studying uh, some rocks and so forth. Uh, earth science, is that what it is? Earth science. And so... Uh, I have a fossil collection, so I went and did a whole presentation on fossils a couple days. And then today, uh, we cracked geodes. And uh, so we all wore the goggles and had the geodes going uh, this today. And it's just my privilege to be able to spend some time with the students all the time. We want to encourage you uh, to um, set aside a special gift tonight that will be used as a Christmas gift for our staff. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the program that we've enjoyed thus far. We know that uh, certainly uh, this whole theme of, of birthdays and being born again will come forward tonight. We pray that you will just speak to our hearts. Thank you for the opportunity to give. Bless this offering now we pray in Jesus' name, amen.
Then peal the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, goodwill to men.
sheep, cows and donkeys, and camels and such, could all gather there, would a mouse be too much? For weeks now, Chris had been carving some wood and making a church mouse as fine as he could. When he had finished the tiny wood mouse and hid it away in his own little house, he marked off the days till the moment was right so he could deliver his gift on this night. He eagerly waited until Christmas Eve, not thinking of all the gifts he'd receive. Instead, he'd been thinking and planning the way he'd deliver his gift before Christmas Day. So carefully waiting till all were asleep, till no eye was open, not even a peep. With a shiver of joy and a smile ear to ear, Christopher knew that the time was now here. Secretly, Chris left his hole in the wall. The tiny carved mouse was clutched in his paw. Now softly tiptoeing down the church aisle, the little mouse felt that it must be a mile. Coming at last to the front of the church, Christopher stared and stopped with a lurch. A soft light shone down on the manger with hay, where lay baby Jesus, a doll made of clay. Grammy, 
I guess he didn't mind being born in a barn. Go on with the Christopher story, Graham. What did Christopher do with the little wooden mouse he carved? Happy birthday, squeaked Christopher. This is for you. His whisper was soft, yet it reached the back pew. Then placing his mouse in the scene on the floor and turning around, he ran straight out the door. Back to Mouse Manor, Christopher sped, blew out his candle, then hopped into bed. His gift was delivered, the secret he'd keep. A smile on his face, he was soon fast asleep. When Christopher awakened, the church bell was ringing. He knew he was late, the people were singing. When he was dressed, and at last in his place, the joy he was feeling now shone on his face. Chris was so happy that bright Christmas day, he sang out with joy in the merriest way. For right there in front of the beautiful church was the mouse he had carved from a small piece of birch. Christopher knew that he'd done what he could for even a church mouse should do what he should. Although it may seem he had just a small part, Chris knew that a mouse can't give Jesus his heart. For that's something only real people can do, like mommies and daddies and small folk, like you. So while you are thinking about his birthday, what will you give him and what will you say? Dear Jesus, I love you and I'll give you my heart. By doing just that, you'll have done the best part. Oh, that was a good story. I like the part about giving Jesus our heart. Maybe that's what I can do. But how do I do that? Does that mean to just love him? Well, yes, but it means more than that. It means to give him your whole life. It means receiving him and his love for you in a very personal way and allowing him to be your savior. I guess I need to think about that more, Grammy. You do that, honey. We'll talk tomorrow. Now you must get to sleep. Good night, dear. Good night, Grammy.
beautiful. Oh, Grammy, I know now. I want to give my heart to Jesus and serve only him. What a wonderful Christmas this would be if you would do that. Do you want to pray now and ask him to be your savior? I, I'd like to, but I, I'm not sure I know how. Will you help me? Oh, I certainly will. We can kneel right here. Just talk to him as you would to a friend. Tell him you want to give him your whole life and become his child. Dear Jesus, I, I love you and I want to give you my life. Grammy says I can do that by giving you my heart. I, I thank you that you love me enough to die for me. I, I'm so happy. I give you my life and my love is a birthday gift. And, and happy birthday, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday, dear. Now you have two birthdays. <laughs> Now, young lady, into bed for sure. Your mom and dad won't let me babysit again if you don't get to sleep. Oh, but Grammy, I'm too excited. Please, just five minutes more. Well, all right. But I mean only five minutes, and I will check to be sure. Wow, what a Christmas this has been already. Two birthdays for me, Jesus. And my born-again birthday's on Christmas, when we celebrate your birthday. Oh, how I wish I could have been there the night you were born. Imagine the cows and the donkey and the little lambs. And why, what is this? I don't remember seeing this here before. Why, it's a mouse, a carved wooden mouse just like the one Christopher made in the story Grammy read. I wonder. And I didn't steal it either. It was in the wastebasket. Where's Christopher? We can't have Christmas without him. He's coming. He was making something out of wood, and he had to clean up the mess he made with the shavings. I hope he doesn't throw the shavings away. 
I could use them in my nest to keep me warm. There he is! Merry Christmas, Christopher! Merry, Merry Christmas, Christopher. Christopher! I'll say it is a church mouse Christmas. And look at this big box I found. It's addressed to all of us. church mice and see how they may have celebrated Christmas. In the words of the poem, even a church mouse can do what he should, and Christopher's birthday gift for Jesus is appropriate for a mouse. Amy, on the other hand, can respond only by giving to Jesus the greatest gift that can be given, that of her entire heart and life. In these quiet moments as we wait before him, Perhaps you would like to make this Christmas your best one ever by making that response also. Dear Jesus, I love you, and I'll give you my heart. By doing just that, you'll have done the best part.
sometimes it's not as easy to give a little message after a program, but tonight I don't have any trouble. Tonight is really simple. You've already been hearing in the program tonight about the necessity of having two births. In fact, over in John chapter 3, these familiar words, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. Jesus here was speaking to Nicodemus and, and telling him of the necessity of being born again. In verse 3 it was mentioned, and in verse 7. Literally, the word again is a, a word that's translated other places in the Bible as above. Jesus was saying you have to be born from above. Um, we know there are two kinds of birth. There's natural physical birth. This passage said that which was born of the flesh is flesh. And there is the spiritual birth. That which is born of the spirit is spirit. Uh, verse 6 goes on to say, uh, give us that. It's talking about a fleshly birth and a spiritual birth. Uh, Jesus was talking about the spiritual birth here in John 3 when he said, you must be born again. We also know that the Bible teaches that there are two kinds of death. There's physical death. Hebrews 9.27 says, and, it is, and as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So we all have an appointment with death, unless the Lord returns first. But there's a second kind of death. It's eternal death. It's separation from God. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So there is a physical death and there's a spiritual death. Separation from God, eternal punishment. Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. John 14.6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Here in John 3 again, in, in verse 36, uh, Jesus said, or excuse me, it was quoted by John there, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. My question for all of us tonight is, how many birth days have you had? Uh, if you've had one birth date, your physical birth, then the Bible is very clear that you will have two deaths. You will have a physical death, and you'll have a spiritual eternal separation from God. But if you have two births, physical and spiritual, then the Bible is clear that you'll only have one death. The physical death, again, unless the Lord returns for us first. Jesus said, you must be born again. Not, you should be, or you might be. He said, you must be. You must have a spiritual birthday. You must have two birthdays. You must have a birth of the flesh, and you must have a birth of the Spirit. Tonight in the program, we saw a child kneel and in faith receive Christ as their Savior. You know, it's wonderful that salvation is so simple that even a child can understand it. 
It's not difficult. It's not hard. We have to acknowledge, number one, that we're sinners, and, and, and we all acknowledge that. There is none righteous, no, not one, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have to acknowledge that we can't start, save ourselves. It's not by works of righteousness, which we've done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. And there's nothing we can do, for by grace are you saved through faith. It's not of yourselves, lest any man should boast. It's the gift of God, lest any man should boast. And so the, the Bible is very clear that you can't save yourself, but it's also very clear that there's one who came who is able to offer you and give you eternal life, give you salvation, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's his birth that we're acknowledging and celebrating tonight. He came to give himself a sacrifice for sin. It's appointed unto men once to die, but after this judgment, but God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so in the program tonight, there was a little girl who went from having one birthday to two birthdays, physical and spiritual. You know, tonight you could also go from one birthday to two by receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Let's bow our heads. Father, we pray tonight that the Spirit of God would be our teacher and our guide tonight in helping us to understand these clear truths. Your Word also tells us that we are to be saved through faith. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We have to believe in our heart, confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus. Father, I pray today that there might be one here, or perhaps more than one, who hasn't yet experienced that spiritual birth. And tonight they would acknowledge before you that need and turn in faith to the Lord Jesus Christ. While our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I'm just going to give a simple invitation tonight. I'm not going to pick you out. I'm not going to approach you. I'm just going to pray for you. Is there anyone here tonight who would say, Pastor Walter, I haven't had that second spiritual birthday that will prepare me for meeting God one day and prepare me for going to heaven, but I'm concerned enough to ask you to pray for me. And if you'd slip up your hand, I'll acknowledge it, and you can put it back down. Tonight, I'm saying that I'm concerned about my soul. I'm concerned about where I'll spend eternity. I'm concerned that I don't, I'm not sure that I know Jesus Christ is my personal Savior, but I want you to pray for me. Is there anyone who would slip up your hand, and I'll acknowledge it and pray for you tonight? Anyone at all? I need Jesus Christ as my Savior. Pray for me. Anyone? Father, we pray that you'll continue your good work using your word as your spirit can take that word and bring conviction to bear. We pray that the message of this evening would penetrate all of our hearts. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for coming tonight. If we can be of any help to any of you, please don't hesitate to seek us out. Um, as we mentioned earlier, the children are going to leave and go back to their classrooms, and you can pick them up there. But before they do, let's give them one more big round of applause. <laughs>